Review. Number 25. Quarter of the way to 100. Unless you're skinning into it. Alright, we got a um, Game Boy game. Why am I doing this to myself again? Oh, that's not even that bad. The Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy. Back in the day, most portable games were just not very good. If you wanted to take your games on the go, you had to sacrifice quality. But Pokemon and portable systems have excelled together since Pokemon's inception, and the trading card game video game is no exception. While the trading card game certainly hasn't been as popular for the Pokemon series as the mainline series games, it's still a fun game to play. Although the idea of this game is just confusing. Like, the Pokemon video games came out first, so then they had a card game based off of that, then they made a video game based off the card game. It's a good thing they didn't make a card game based off this video game, am I right? So, shortly after starting the game, the professor of the region holds your hand through a practice match. You know, it worked having a professor for the mainline games because the professors were researching live animals, but what's this guy even do? Does he research playing cards? Like, what's that even mean? Even though there is a lot of hand-holding, the tutorial is really useful because a lot of kids back in the day had no idea how to play the trading card game. I didn't really know the rules of it until I played this game. So then just like the mainline games, you get to choose a deck that revolves around one of the three starters. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, or Charmander. Of course, I picked Charmander because I'm basic, even though base set Charizard, while worth a lot of money, is terrible in the card game. I'll try to keep my pros and cons about the video game and not about the card game itself, but in comparison to the mainline video games, the card game is just slower, longer, and way more reliant on chance. You can train up and steamroll any trainer in the mainline games, but in this game it just straight up feels like I'm preparing for a major duel every time I face anybody, which is not exactly the greatest feeling, and it's not really something that this game can avoid because of the card game. Unlike the mainline games, you can choose where you go first. So like any normal person, I go to the place that has a weakness to fire. You duel a few people, and then you get the leader, and then you duel them too. I did find this one trade where this guy was going to give me a rare card for a common card, which is extremely unrealistic, but I'll take it. It's also nice when you beat up on other people and they just hand over booster packs. I understand in RPGs when you win a battle you get rewards and loot and stuff, but I just don't know why these people are just handing over booster packs after losing. Anyway, I beat the grass leader and the poison type leader, although the poison type leader had Mewtwo's and other really good cards, like, it didn't really seem like that should have been at the early game, but I chose this route, so that's on me. So after my fire Pokemon cards have run out of usefulness, I switch my deck up to include other cards so I can battle the water leader. So you can go into the deck configuration screen and customize your deck, which naturally, I swap out my fire cards for grass cards. But now my deck's completely messed up and it has no continuity, I can't even beat the lower level people, I'm getting beat by little girls like Amanda and I lost to Sarah three times in a row. I also noticed that the duels where you're only playing for two prize cards instead of three or four or six are just a lot harder to play. I guess my deck just needs a lot more time to set up than other decks. I guess that's really just the nature of card games. Some of it's based on the luck of the draw, and I don't really seem to be having very good luck against anybody right now. Speaking of bad luck, I tried to play the rest of the game to record footage of it, but my internal battery must have run dry or something else happened on the save file, because it's not there anymore. Yay for retro gaming technology! From my memory previously playing through this game, you go through and beat all the gyms and eventually you have to duel the keepers of the legendary cards which are basically just the legendary bird cards. What's a little confusing and frustrating to me is that the legendary bird cards aren't really that great. Like Moltres is pretty decent, but Zapdos or Articuno are just hard to set up and there are better, more versatile deck configurations out there. I get that they're rare cards and that they're legendary Pokemon and in the mainline games the legendary Pokemon are way better than the other ones, but the fact that this is the reward for beating the end duelists, it's just a big letdown. Overall, I'd say if you like Pokemon or you like card games in general, this can definitely be a game you can enjoy playing through, if the save file doesn't get lost of course. 
I just don't think this game has a wide appeal. I know I stress wide appeal and accessibility a lot, but this one is really for a narrow segment of players. This definitely isn't the top 5 or bottom 5 game on this screen, so it doesn't change. Again, it's a fine game, but you can just play the card game too if you wanted to play that. The first Pokemon entry into the series. Wonder what else I have around the corner. Guess we'll have to find out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Look out for the next review.